winter's grip still holds strong. Shane Battier, Duke University. Jason Williams, Duke University. Gilbert Arenas, University of Arizona. Jason, Jason Gardner, University of Arizona. The team riding incredibly high on emotion is now playing Monday night at the championship game. The national championship. The national championship. The national championship. The national championship. Duke, Arizona. The two that will vie for the national crown. CBA Sports presentation, a prelude to a championship. He's sponsored by Honda. A winning lineup of cars, sport utility vehicles, and minivans. Minnesota is the land of 10,000 lakes, and tonight, Minneapolis is the land of two teams, Arizona and Duke. And beneath this distinctive Teflon bubble, the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome is awash in a sea of red and blue, the team colors of the Wildcats and the Blue Devils. Arizona is looking for its second national title in five years. Duke returns to the very court where it won its second and last NCAA crown nine years ago. Good evening, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel. Welcome to Prelude to a Championship as CBS Sports proudly broadcasts its 20th consecutive NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. At the end of the evening, this coveted trophy will be presented to either Arizona or Duke. Our tip time is 9:18 Eastern. And what an emotional night this is for both teams, in particular for Arizona head coach Lute Olson, whose wife Bobby succumbed to cancer on New Year's Day. Coach Olson's two daughters and two of his grandchildren were with him as Arizona arrived tonight. Right now, it's my pleasure to introduce my co-host, Special K, Clark Kellogg, and the most outstanding player of the 1972 and 73 Final Fours, Bill Walton. Gentlemen, let's start with Arizona. Both these teams have some injury problems. Gilbert Arenas on Saturday suffered a right shoulder contusion. He told our Armin Katayan a short while ago that he is at best 50% for the game. What does that mean? Greg, so much hinges on that right wing for Gilbert Arenas. If he can't go, if he's ineffective, then Lou Dolson of the Arizona the Wildcats they move Richard Jefferson to the backcourt and they go big up front but there are so many questions for Arizona tonight Michael Wright the power presence inside can he play the transition game can he defend the three-point shot then you got Richard Jefferson with a dynamic athleticism and his versatility will he be disciplined enough mentally can he stay out of the foul trouble that has plagued him at times this year and then there's Jason Gardner who has been the team's best player of late he will like the rest of the team have to have the game of his life tonight. Conditioning will be a factor. Most importantly for Arizona, though, will be their mental state. Can they continue the relentless attack that carried them to that dominating victory against Michigan State on Saturday night? All right, Bill. Duke also has its injury concerns. Chris Duhon took what looked to be a horrific fall on Saturday. He suffered a mild concussion. Clark. You talk about Chris Duhon. His effectiveness is critical to what Duke likes to do defensively because of his ability to pressure the ball. But Shane Battier, the consensus All-America, has carried this Blue Devil team all season long. He's delivered in a big way time and time again. He'll face his toughest challenge from the Arizona Wildcats defense. And Jason Williams will match up with Jason Gardner in the backcourt. That is a delicious matchup, one I'll have isolated camera on. Although Jason is taller, Jason Williams, that is, he'll meet a guy in Jason Gardner who's just as quick and just as strong. It should be a tremendous matchup. I agree with you, gentlemen. A timeout, prelude to a championship. We'll continue live from Minneapolis in a moment. Championship a short time ago our Armin Katayan caught up with one of the Wildcats. I'm with Lauren Woods. Lauren I'm sure your thoughts with the team today have been dominant about this game. What have been the dominant thoughts for you today? Uh, you know we, we just want to come out and just play 40 minutes uh, of hard basketball. Um, you know it's, it's our last 40 minutes. Uh, emotions are high. Uh, as as, as uh, I'm sure Duke's emotional level is high also, but uh, you know I think it's going to be a great game. How big of a motivating factor is Bobby Olson in her memory and winning a national championship for her and Coach Olson? 
Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of motivation for us. Uh, certainly, uh, Mrs. O is, is always going to be with us. Uh, her spirit is, has been with us for the whole season. So, uh, you know, of, of course, this season is dedicated to her. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, also, it's also in our hands. You know, we, we have to do what we have to do to, uh, to win the game. And, you know, we're, we're, I think we're ready. All right. Thanks a lot, Lauren. Good luck. Armin, thank you. And with more on the status of the Blue Devils, Chris Duhon, let's check in now with Bonnie Bernstein. Bonnie. Hi, Greg. Well, Duhon is slated to start. He did not practice yesterday, but went harder than any other player today at shoot-around. The coaches ran him for about 15 minutes just to see how he reacted when he broke a sweat. His head was still bothering him a little bit, but he assured me yesterday he's been taking plenty of aspirin. Now, last night after the team meeting, Coach K showed his players a highlight reel of some of the best plays of the season. He told them, I want you to go to bed thinking only positive thoughts. And one last note, Duke actually switched locker rooms today. Coach K told me this one's a bigger locker room, but he also added, if you want to mention, this was the locker room where we won the national title in 1992. Well, that's just fine, Greg. All right, Bonnie, thank you. All right, your last moment. Bill, pick this game. Duke is the favorite. has everything going for it, but Arizona will win it quite possibly in overtime. I Clark. think Arizona earns the title because of their defensive versatility and their offensive balance. All right, gentlemen, prelude to a championship will continue here on CBS in just a moment. Dome in Minneapolis tonight. The gentlemen who will call our national championship game begin their second decade together as partners. I'm pleased to send it over to my CBS Sports colleagues, Jim Nance and Billy Packer. Gentlemen. Thank you so much, Greg. 11 years at all. You're so fired up, you forgot your mic oh, until the last well, second. You, Jim, I would have hey, and really, in all our years, this is about as anticipated a matchup as we've had in the championship game. Jim, it's really been a glorious college basketball season, and really the way to finish everything off here. They were 1-1-A one, one before it all got started. They'll settle things right out in the court tonight. Arizona Duke preseason one and two. It's a motion against Will, and uh, look at this right here. One seeds beaten three times by Arizona in its championship run of 97. Only time in tournament history anybody beat three ones, the maximum possible, on the way to the title. They've already knocked off two. This would be their third tonight if the Wildcats were to defeat Duke. They would become then just the second hope by Arizona. And the Blue Devils are taking the floor, but let's talk about Arizona, what they must do here, partner. Well, Michael Wright came to play. He went three halves without scoring a field goal, but took off against Michigan State. Lauren Woods has blocked 20 shots in this NCAA tournament, and whether he's standing flat on the ground or going up in the sky, he has really been a one-man defense on the inside for Arizona. And Gilbert Arenas, six steals in the semifinals to set a new NCAA semifinal record. Not only did he steal, but he started the offense with his steals. The defense became the offense for Arizona in whipping Michigan State. All right, Billy, break down the Blue Devils of Duke tonight. Well, I thought a great game plan by Maryland. Take away the three-point shot of Duke early. But Jason Williams is such a versatile player. He put the penetration move on and went inside and finished better than any point guard in the country can. Shane Battier, seven straight 20-point games, but what makes him so great is his defensive ability shutting off anything that comes down inside. And of course, the big difference for Duke in this game really could be important is Carlos Boozer is back, and he provides a force offensively down in the low post for Mike Krzyzewski. It is absolutely electric inside the Metrodome. Arizona Duke, the lineups in just a moment. We are back in Minneapolis, national championship night here. And now the starting lineups with Jackie Bowe. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's championship game between the University of Arizona's Wildcats and the Duke University Blue Devils. Let's meet the starting lineups. At forward for Arizona, Junior listed at 6'7 from Chicago, Illinois, wearing number two, Michael Wright. At forward for Duke, a sophomore listed at 6'8 from Lake Oswego, Oregon, number 34, Mike Dunleavy. At forward for Arizona, a junior listed at 6'7 from Phoenix, Arizona, number 44, Richard Jefferson. At forward for Duke, a senior listed at 6'8 from Birmingham, Michigan, number 31, Shane Pettier. At center, 
for Arizona. A senior listed at 7-1 from St. Louis, Missouri, wearing number three, Lauren Woods. At center for Duke, a sophomore listed at 6-11 from Tampa, Florida, number 20, Casey Sanders. At guard for Arizona, a sophomore listed at 6-3 from North Hollywood, California, number zero, Gilbert Arenas. At guard for Duke, a freshman listed at 6-1 from Slidell, Louisiana, number 21, Chris Duhon. At guard for Arizona, a sophomore listed at 5'10 from Indianapolis, Indiana, number 22, Jason Gardner. And at guard for Duke, a sophomore listed at 6'2 from Plainfield, New Jersey, number 22, Jason Williams. The head coach for Arizona, Luke Olson. And for Duke, Mike Krzyzewski. These two coaches have met five times. They've been great battles. The biggest margin of victory was only eight. There were two two-point games and a double overtime game. So they've all been thrillers. And Billy, what do you have for us tonight with the Packer points? Well, Jim, three is the number. Three, if Duke wins, will be the number of national championships for Mike Krzyzewski. But three is also the number of their shooting. They've had 398 threes they've made on the year, which is a new NCAA record. Boozer's breakout. He broke out in the game against Maryland. His contribution is so important. 19 points in that game in just 25 minutes. He could be a factor inside. He's mine. That is Mr. Jefferson. His defensive assignments have been amazing, and he has really taken on the challenge, stopping Frankie Williams and Jason Richardson. He has been outstanding. And Woods' is homecoming. A lot of people don't realize this, but Lauren Woods started his career in the ACC, where he played under Tim Duncan at Wake Forest. And he has seen the Duke Blue Devils before. He's been quite a factor inside defensively. He'll have to do it again tonight. The Blue Devils have never lost inside of this arena. Their last championship was won here in 1992. Tonight seeking twin championships here in the Twin Cities. Battier saw him a moment ago, his last game in a Duke uniform. The officials include Gerald Boudreaux working his third straight national championship game. Jim, I think the first time down the floor when we see who Jefferson is going to guard, it's going to tell us a lot about the thinking of Boot Olsen in this game. Is it Battier or is it Williams? Tipped out to Woods in Arizona with first possession. And Battier is going to take Woods on the inside. That kind of surprised me. I thought it'd be Sanders. Woods dumps it inside. Jefferson. Yes. Jefferson's going to be a tough matchup for Dunleavy, who's giving up a lot of power. And it looks like it's not going to be either. It's a zone. A matchup zone by Arizona. They really did a great job changing up their defenses when they played against Michigan State. Jason Williams short on the three. He struggled from behind the arc Saturday. Ball picked up by Duhon. Williams good head fake. Here comes the trailer. Dunleavy. Battier on the follow. He'll head to the line. Dunleavy missed some e easy openings early in the basketball game the other day against Maryland. He has got to be able to finish. Duke's road to the title game through Monmouth and Missouri, then UCLA and USC knocked out from Philadelphia and Maryland for the third time in the season. Biggest comeback in Final Four history pulled off by Duke. 22-point deficit, 33-point turnaround. Arenas called on the foul. Battier missing on the first. Jim Arenas is holding his uh, right underneath his throat. I don't know if he's already been affected, but you can see he's got that shirt on. We'll see how flexible he is, particularly if he has to go and reach for a rebound or a steal. Armin Katayan reported in the pregame show that he's only 50% tonight. Woods gets it down low. Left hand, good again for the Wildcats. Their first two trips, working it inside both times. Battier giving up a lot of size right there, and I'm really surprised it's not Sanders. They stay right in that matchup zone. And they send Boozer in. He'll be checking in in a moment. That's deflected by Michael Wright and Woods. On the baseline, good ball. Trying to call timeout. 
Good job by Wright getting out there. And here's that half hook. I really think Battier has given up too much size to be able to handle Lauren Woods if Woods is going to get the ball in that low, lower position. Boozer comes in right away, and that's going to force Woods to have to play a, a low post player that's going to score. A minute 15 into the game for one of the real stars of that comeback victory on Saturday. Williams on the drive. Oh, what a move. That was a man-to-man -man on the out-of-bounds situation. Williams took advantage of it. Gardner not even close to staying in front of it. And it still is. Battier on Woods. He's got to play in front of him and get some help on the line. Michael Wright steps past Boozer, has it deflected, and Dunleavy flies through for the rebound. Excellent block by both Battier and Boozer on that one. Three-pointer, short. Well, we can see what's happening right there. Is Battier, if they're going to play man-to-man -man and Woods is going to guard him, Battier is going to pull him outside for the jump shots. Right by Gardner. No help inside because, as usual, Jason Williams will use that rim to ward off the defender. He uses the cylinder about as well as oh, anyone. He's he good he for really one does. of those a game, at least. So we have Williams on Arenas. Arenas moves very well without the ball and normally would be looking for some lobs against a smaller man. Woods moving on Battier. He's made now two terrific inside moves. I really wonder about that matchup. Again, I think that Battier given up so much size, and there goes Arizona back to their matchup. 1-2-2 two, two zone. Taking it right to the national defensive player of the year in most circles. And I really think if Duke against this zone tries to spend all their time on the perimeter instead of going inside, they're not going to get the looks. Suddenly they guns a three. They go inside, pump it back out. This matchup zone will be hard to handle if all you're going to do is perimeter pass. Here's Arenas' first move. Arenas had a lot about going out on him. And Arenas with that sore shoulder though hits his first shot of the night. So far Jim Arizona having no trouble whatsoever getting the kind of looks and shots against Duke. Dunleavy. Boozer, did he touch it last? Yes, Arizona ball. Good job by Jefferson going in behind him. We'll see Woods really taking advantage of Battier, who is much better at guarding either a power forward or a small forward. To play a postman as gifted as Woods, who can play at 7-1 over the top of him. It's a real tough assignment. I see Battier trying to get in front of him, but Woods is a target we can throw over him. Timeout has been called. Timeout called. Timeout called. Arizona thin in the corner. We'll be right back to Minneapolis. Arizona has played with a heavy heart this season. January 1st, Bobby Olson lost her struggle with cancer. She and Luke, just an inseparable team for 47 years. She was the Wildcats' first lady by all accounts. She was there on the floor four years ago celebrating the Cats National Championship. You know, Billy, they started their married life of all places right here in Minneapolis back in 1953. And I can say, after being here for a week, she is on the minds of every player, administrator, supporter of Arizona tonight. It is truly palpable. Ten on the shot clock after that timeout. Jefferson weaving his way through another close range attempt and Woods with the follow was fouled. Jim, you really get a feeling out here right now that Woods at seven foot one is playing over the top of everything that Duke throws at him. The Wildcats through the Midwest and their average margin of victory about 17 a game including a 19 point knockout of Michigan State on Saturday. It was a two point game at the half. What a superb Second half execution by Arizona that really left Tom Izzo baffled about you know that team that was on the floor. He didn't even recognize his own team that that night, Saturday. Lauren Woods, this is only for the second time in the NCAA tournament. He's now 25 for 27. That really helps when you've got a big man that can shoot some free throws. Nice pass. Boozer, though, unable to clutch it. Good throw. Boozer should have had his hands on that one. He had right in a bad position. Duke going full court pressure here. Trying to take away the advantage that Woods presents down in low. Oh, Jefferson just took his eye off of it. Turnover. 
And Lute Olsen saying to Woods, get the ball in the hands of Gardner against this press. Good move by Mike Krzyzewski, yeah. changing things up a little bit. Just the threat of a press. Trying to cause a turnover. Dunleavy steps in for the two. Good defense that time by Jefferson. Offered the shot. All air, and Arenas brings it down the middle. Inside right, who warmed up in the second half against Michigan State with action like that. He was in a game-and-a-half slump, though, before he got cooking against the Spartans. Jim, I really have not seen anybody handle Duke so easily offensively as what we're seeing out of Arizona right now. Boozer inside, and he's going to the line. Count the basket. A good attacking the defensive zone with the pass inside or the penetration inside instead of just relying on the three. Good move by Duke University here. Lauren Woods trying to stay out of foul trouble. When you take a look at one of Arizona's loss when they had everybody back together, that overtime loss in Los Angeles against UCLA, Dan Gudzurek played 41 minutes in that overtime. He had 22 points and 17 rebounds. Lauren Woods fouled out with just one for five. So you have got to occupy him in the offensive low post as Duke's now doing with Boozer. Woods with five points. Arizona by two. Jim Nance and Billy Packer back at the national championship game with a singular sky cam, and Duke brings in Nate James, senior. Jim. That is the first crack we see in the coaching philosophy so far. I'm sure Mike Krzyzewski says we're too small to play this team. So out goes Duhan, in comes James. So Mike is going to try to match up with Luke. Here comes Duhan back in the game because of the foul. And the second foul on Williams. That is not what he was looking for at all. So he wanted to go with a bigger team. But with Williams out of there now, that really takes away a lot of the offensive penetration, particularly against the zone. Two fouls for the All-America in three minutes and 39 seconds. A big chip early on the Arizona side, but that went inside right. For the There's a case where Boozer has got to allow James to try to stay with Arenas. The size of Woods on the inside with Wright. You can't afford to give it up. Nice pass. Snappy, but unable to finish. Dunleavy out rebound. Long rebound. Gardner. Nice push ahead on his own. Got the three. No. Too long. Duhon comes out with the run. James pushes it ahead to Dunleavy. Duke will settle down. Duke is not settled down, though, Jim. They really are not in, in sync right now. Here we're back to the man to man situation with Williams out of the game. Boy, these coaches are really pulling. The switch is early here. And talking about switches, that's a switch well, for Battier from three. No matter who they put on Battier in, the, in regard to Wright or Woods, they can't match up with it. That's got to be Jefferson's man. Arenas drives, no foul, and Boozer clears for Duke. Good, strong rebound by Boozer. Here you see again, Lauren Woods stuck outside on Battier. He's in a lot of trouble if he's going to have to play him out there. Battier recognizes that. Staying up at the top of the key. He goes by. Yep, pushes it to the corner. Duhon with the lead and cleared by Jefferson. I think Duke should have been a little bit more patient there to let Battier play with Woods. Son. Arenas to the paint. Woods on the follow. Oh, over over the, back. the back on Battier. Woods over Battier's back. I think Woods anticipated that was going to be a shot by Arenas, Jim, and when he got out of position. He knows he missed a chippy. Yep. Take your championship game experience to a new level. View replays from tonight's game through iVision only at the Internet's home of college basketball. CBS.sportsline.com, AOL keyword CBS Sportsline as Sanders comes back, the starter for Duke, and Justin Wessel, and... Eugene Edgerson, who's often been like the winning edge coming off that bench for Arizona. Hey, both of these coaches have won national championships. It's the first time ever in a Final Four where we have that situation and also two coaches up for Basketball Hall of Fame voting. So it's really an interesting situation to watch them pull lineup after lineup out here matching up with each other. Berger had a pick from Wessel, thought about it. Now they'll reset. They've gotten off good shots throughout now the start of this game. Wessel couldn't reach it, and Sanders takes it away. Blue Devils with the steal. This is not the lineup that Lou Olson would like to have out there, but he's trying to steal some minutes so he can get Wright and Woods back in there without any more foul trouble. 
Straight man to man here now by Arizona. They're both on the bench with just one, Wright and Woods. Williams on the Duke bench with two. Gardner on Dunleavy got a lot of size advantage. Battier wanting the challenge, Edgerson, who pushed off. Just a great backup and crossover dribble by Shane Battier. Tough matchup for Edgerson, who would like to play a power forward and stay in the painted area defensively. Fourth team foul, first on Edgerson. Sanders sets a big screen. Battier, though, short on the three. He was leaning on that shot. Did, did you notice that? Yep. Gliding. Off balance. Yep. He was gliding as opposed to normally squaring up and taking a jumper. Arenas, though, he's set. Too strong again. You know, Duke has got an opportunity with some of these rebounds to get out and run. They haven't tried to get their break started. And I don't think Gilbert Arenas is anywhere near 100% healthy, Jim. It's kind of obvious. He's just not exploding like he has been. Now Wessel's got the job with Battier. Switch off back to Edgerson on Battier. Ten on the shot clock. The freshman, Duhon, takes note. He needs to keep the ball in his hands and go ahead and break to the basket. It's taking too much time. And that's going against Duhon. Very good job by Gardner. Duhon had to recognize at the eight-second mark to get the clear out started. Got the under-12 timeout. Duke shooting only 31% at the start. Duke has already launched eight threes in this game. They're averaging 30 attempts per tournament game, but a big note again, Williams out with the two fouls, and he remains on the bench out of this break, but Luke Walton, number four, comes in. First action of the night for Arizona. Well, Jim, the last time in this tournament that Duke really exploded with a three-point shot was that 18 for 38 threes against Monmouth. But the better teams you play against and the, and the looks they're taking away from the three, Duke is going to have to score inside or get it inside and go out. Warren Woods on his return, coming up short, tried that left-handed move again. I think both of these teams are showing each other a little bit too much respect. To the hole, Banier. Didn't have the right spin on it. Nobody finishing strong so far. Arenas backs off the challenge presented by James Gardner. Somebody's wide open. It's Woods. Again, another short one this time. Falling away, he'll head to the line for two. Tuesday on CBS, illusionist David Copperfield performs his greatest challenge ever inside a tornado of fire, an all new special live. That's. Tomorrow night, Copperfield, tornado of fire. So that foul on Dunleavy, his first. And Billy, you talked about it, one of your Packer points. His ACC heritage, Lauren Woods, starting at Wake as a freshman when Tim Duncan was a senior. The last NCAA tournament game he played was on Arizona's floor, where they were knocked out by Stanford. Got exposed to the school when it, a year later decided he wanted to transfer. He had seen it, liked it, went back there. but. The Duncan influence on Woods, what was that like? Well, it was really tough because Lauren was a McDonald's All-American type player, a heavy recruit, whereas Tim Duncan was not. But Duncan improved so much over his career by the time that Lauren got there, Tim was a dominant player. And Lauren could really never adjust to that extreme very well and had all kinds of problems. And it's good to see that he's been able to get his career back on track. James, baseline jumper, rattles it home for a two. That's a big shot. James has been a very valuable player for Duke. Has played fewer minutes of late than he's normally. But he is a guy that can go ahead and hit that three-point shot. Big lift for Duke if they can give him the minutes. Easy baskets early for Arizona, but Cats have missed their last six attempts. Walton. Turn around, ends the streak. Walton, a good passer, good shooter, can put up some big numbers. He's got a good head. You see some nights he steals the ball. He knows how to handle the ball extremely well. He'd be a key man off the bench. So just as we talked about James off the bench, Walton fits the same bill. Duhon over Woods. Wow, what a shot. You're talking about a shot that he threw up over a guy that's blocked 20 so far in this tournament. He gauged it, the arc, just right. He really did, Jim. You'll watch that arc as you're talking about right up over the top. Terrific job on his part. Here's the pickup full court again, and just as Lute Olsen suggested, get the ball to Gardner, get out of his way. He thinks he can handle it. Just dribbling one-on-one. -on -one. Williams has come back on the floor for Duke with his two fouls. And he's guarding Walton, which is a tough task for him. Walton will take him inside. And Boozer also returned. 
Woods, too strong. Hey. Boozer with the board. Well, Woods putting up a lot of shots so far for him, which takes Arizona somewhat out of their offense. So he's two of six, Billy, from the field. And we're midway through the first half. Inside, left hand, and Boozer. Getting stronger every game on this return. This is his fourth game back after missing six. With a broken bone in his right. Foot. Absolutely critical for Duke to get an inside presence scoring wise. Now they're starting to pick up the intensity a little bit. Oh boy, that could be Williams' third. He was lucky there. Arenas and out to James. It was a how huge would that have been? Well, he knew it. He did a like a twister like uh, move to get away from him. Again, Boozer doing a good job. He's got Woods inside. Great Look at that stuff. Fake. What about that fake? A great drop step. Lauren Woods is occupied now, and when you have him occupied with an offensive player, he's no longer available to play that one-man zone and block the shots. Boozer had 19 in the win against Maryland. He's a bruiser again tonight with seven early. Walton steps in, gives it up, Woods. Another attempt, good this time. Good job by Lauren Woods. He's taken over the offensive post-up moves, and he's just a little bit too big, big for anybody that Duke puts on him. Back to the zone. Bad pass by Williams. And Woods was eyeing it all the way. That had no chance for success. So the All-American so far has not been able to go, get it going on either end of the floor. Walton's oh, pass oh, picked by Williams. Arena's chasing. That puts Duke up by three. And believe me, watching Arenas there, Jim, I'd say 60% because he has explosive speed. Big play by Jason Williams. First thing he's been able to get done tonight. Gardner. Went down low over Duhon. Gardner really was having problems in the NCAA tournament. Getting up to the Illinois game, he was 8 for 23 up to that point, and then had 18, and of course, the big 21 points against Michigan State. It's Woods and Battier, that matchup again. Duke ought to take advantage of it, get it out to Battier. Nate James, Coach K, said he was their MVP the second half of the Maryland game, and Walton with a hand on that one. James had nine rebounds in that victory against the Terrapins, six on the offensive end. First foul for Walton. And how about this road, this attempted road to the championship all over again, just as the routing was back in 92. Greensboro, Philadelphia, Minnesota championship. And they do it again. Nate James, uh, Jim, as I said, played a lot more during the regular season, was averaging 28 minutes a game. During the tournament, he's down to 22. But we're talking about a fifth-year senior, the only man that's ever played on five regular season championships in the ACC. So you're talking about a very experienced player. Wright and Jefferson, back for the Wildcats. They continue to shuttle in Boozer and Sanders, keeping them fresh. Sanders back on the floor. It looks like Lou Olson's case is saying, I want to keep my team as fresh as possible, play this first half just to get to the second. Like Battier, James closing out a career here tonight. Good tap. And almost into the arms of Battier, but right. No one's going to take it out of his hands. Sanders going way up over everybody in the secondary position. And there's Battier again. Woods getting good position on him. Jefferson kicks it out. Probably should have shot that jumper, don't you think? He was wide open inside. Wright's got position, though. Look at this. That's James all it's over it. They all ball. Good line. All ball. And Duke has the arrow. Great job by James inside to help out. What a boost from Boozer, make, making all three from the floor. He's got seven doubles in front. The Goodyear Blimp outside here, the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company, providing the aerial views of Minneapolis. Duke leads it by two. Mike Krzyzewski's seventh championship game in 16 years. And for Lute Olson tonight, trying to become the oldest coach to ever win the national championship, breaking the mark of Fog Allen. Williams with the three, right out of the break. Boy, he likes that shot. Gardner didn't get to him in time. Williams loves to go ahead and square up off the dribble. He normally will hit it. Duke had hit last five shots before that miss. 
Gardner with a three. And Jefferson, oh. look out. Whoa. That's going to be traveling. Yeah. He tried to get the timeout, but it already hit the floor. He's had a quiet game to this point. He came out early in the Michigan State game Saturday with a huge block early on Richardson. There's a great rebound on his part, but you see he's on the floor before he calls timeout. They're starting to get on the officials, and Jim, what we're seeing right now is a backlash in the part of the fans where people fe feel that Duke is getting all the breaks from officiating. Three second, Three second violation. violation. They didn't get any, uh, any, and, and, any uh, sighting that time, Billy. Well, what is really interesting here is because of the Maryland game and the way that Duke goes to the foul line more than their opponents, with the exception of the Duke fans, it seems like all the fans are in favor of Arizona. This will be interesting to watch and see if they get momentum off the crowd. Walton comes back to him. Good hands to retrieve it. He has great hands. Boy, Wright is being active inside. Woods tips it twice. Last touch by Dunley, the Arizona ball. Near the conclusion of this game, we'll be selecting the Chevrolet most valuable player from each team. To date, Chevrolet has contributed approximately $8 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. All right, Jefferson will kick it back out to Walton. Solid minutes off the bench. Wright, Boozer pushing, but they say, hold on, travel on Wright. Well, Wright is showing how active he wants to be inside. Jim, remember at the top of the show, we saw, saw him moving those feet very nicely in the second half against Michigan State. He's back to that kind of activity. It's going to be interesting to watch how this thing plays out with the crowd. Battier on the drive. Gets the roll over two Wildcats. Well, there's a case where Lauren Woods has no chance to play Battier outside. Battier having all kinds of problems playing Woods down in low on the inside. Good defensive job by Duhon. Gardner had a terrific crossover dribble. See, here's what we have inside. Woods, Woods with the left three. hand again. He can really shoot it. Either way inside, he's having a very aggressive start to this night. There you have a situation. Woods can't handle Battier when he's outside. Battier can't handle Woods when he's inside. Watch Battier will take him again on the drive. They cleared there it out for him. Woods shut oh, down. Oh, Battier time. wants the ball back. Williams wants the three. Walton with the position underneath. Bad move by Duke that time. They should have got the ball right back to Battier. Williams went for the steal. Jefferson, great pass inside. Oh! Rejected by Boozer. And a fast break on a sit-down play by Battier. Williams nowhere to go, just throws it up in the area. And now the crowd is really unhappy. There was no call at the other there end. There is no question, Jim, that this is a repercussion against the Duke program by people who said we've seen enough from officials that give Duke the breaks. It's I've never seen this before in a basketball game where you figure the crowd basically is, is interspersed among all kinds of fans. So second on Walton, but then again, maybe we just have a majority of people in the building tonight being Arizona fans. I'm not buying that one. I'm saying that it's Arizona and it's Duke and the neutrals are going in one direction. And you're saying the officiating is too? No, I, I'm not necessarily saying that, but every call now is being questioned. And look at Lutas working the fans. And we're gonna see Mike Krzyzewski try to get those referees back in tow. It's kind of interesting. Two very seasoned veteran coaches, and they are going to make the guys in the striped shirts work hard tonight. And Nate James returns, Williams out. And Mike Krzyzewski says, good job, and he was referring to his players. Battier looking to help out a little bit on the press, but good job by Arizona and the fact that they feel Gardner one-on-one -on -one can bring it up. So Woods goes low again. Jefferson suspends and bangs on the jump. A beautiful shot. It sure was because he went up for his normal jump and went, let Dunleavy come right down and stayed up there. Terrific pose. He had to take a personal timeout in mid-flight. <laughs> he really did. They challenge him to go that way. Dunleavy short, but gets it back. Has a great nose for that. Battier, open three. Boy, when Duke does get the open looks, and Battier would like to have that one back because Wood was nowhere near him. Couldn't have had anything more set than that. Feet were set, everything was square. Set play coming up right here. Double for Arenas coming out over the top. Arenas 
secure this time. They say it's a two. Put on the line. Boy, good job by Gilbert Arenas. He's not as quick as normal, so he went ahead and got that extra dribble to get open. He had some of the pre-championship game jitters and worried about that shoulder last night and went out late with one of the assistant coaches to a local high school just to shoot some hoops. Last night around 10 o'clock local time. And here's Duhan, yes, with the three. Young man who was recruited as one of the best shooters coming out of high school in the country and really looked originally to make the play as opposed to look for his shot. Now that he's looking for his shot, it's coming back. Woods, the, the pass to, to Woods is getting there so easily. Battier on his back. Battier too small for him, and great job by Woods to take advantage of it. has been called. Woods with 13 of Arizona's 29. There we see Williams going on the inside. No question, body contact on the play. Pretty am amazing accomplishment. Five straight wins in tournament play over number one seeds. And that's going back to the 97 championship run when they took out the three winningest programs Jim, in we, basketball history. We were Kansas, there for all of them. UCLA. You remember that Kansas that was interrupted, that was their by, team. That was was interrupted by Providence. Mm -hmm. Then they got to the final four, knocked off North Carolina. And then in one of the worst shooting exhibitions ever in a national championship game, shooting under 40 percent, but going games. to the line continually, they knocked off Kentucky in overtime. Only team to ever win the championship when shooting under 40 in both games at the final four. There's Williams knocking down a three. It's amazing how quickly he can spin against his body and square up. Right inside. <laughs> Terrific pass by Gardner. Again, Duke has given up a lot of size in those matchups when James has to play against the right. Duke not taking advantage of Battier as much as they could. Again, Williams. He can sometimes get a streak going where he just thinks he's going, not going to miss for a long stretch. He did it in Philadelphia. 19 unanswered for his team. Great rebound. Jefferson sets up Gardner. Arenas, so it'll be a third try for Arizona. First time we've seen him extend. Williams on the drive. Kicks it corner. James, three. Short. He never had the ball in his hands on that shot, Jim. Batting A. Steps past Jefferson. Now the pace starting to pick up here, a little more frenetic. But because we have such good individual defensive players on the floor, those open looks are sometimes not there as you normally expect. Battier would normally hit that shot. He's trying to stay low. Battier's trying to stay low at Underwoods. Woods playing right over the top of him. Woods needs some help. Four on the shot clock, Jefferson. Time to kick it around, Arenas three. And that's, well, it would have been a shot clock violation anyway. One minute to play in the half. Arizona's 0 for 6 from behind the arc. For the last uh, 48 hours, so much conjecture about what kind of game would Lauren Woods have tonight, and he's having a big one. Well, we're talking about a man that has had two triple doubles in his career, so he knows how to put up some numbers. And he's really doing a job because there's no good matchup that Duke University can put on him. He's not on the floor right now. Lou Dolson doesn't want him to pick up a cheap foul in this last minute. Coming up, single at the half, Greg, Mark, and Bill. Let's dig in Berg's special homage to seniors all coming up from senior at the half. There's the stuff right back, and they call it just such. And uh, it's Maryland, but uh, sorry, it's going Arizona's way. But we're talking about, again, this issue here. That What was your reaction to that one right there? Well, I thought it was an excellent play. Uh, just as we saw down the other end, right on the ball, right was all over it. Good call. Only 14 fouls on Duke in this half. Not a bad time to commit one if you have to instead of giving a guy an easy play because he's not going to the line anyway. And there's Arenas. Got the jumper, but he's not going on to the line. That's not on the shot. Want. You don't want the foul on the shot. Access live head-to-head -head team and player stats through this interactive telecast available on Ultimate TV. The Midwest Regional MVP is uh, Gilbert Arenas to the line for two. Again, while making a steal on Saturday, jarring shot to a Michigan State player, born for the ball, and shoulder 
has caused him considerable pain. Jim, I think that you have to make Arenas move in this game if you're Duke. I'm very surprised that Williams is coming back into this game. Remember, he's got two fouls on him. There's 35 seconds. You know how Jason Williams likes to drive to the basket in these situations. If you're Arizona and you do those and you want to say, try to draw the charge, don't go for the block. His free throw for the tie. And that was a bad foul by Duke University. They had fouls to give that wouldn't have put Arizona on the line. Instead, they allowed Arenas to get the shot off before they committed the foul. So Duke can go for the last shot. And it's man-to-man. -man. The matchup, Walton, Dunleavy. Let's see where it is. I think Duhan, with the somewhat injured Arenas, may be your best bet so that Williams doesn't draw this charge. Gardner, 22 on 22, Williams, Basket. and Jefferson swats it away. Great job by Williams to get inside without committing the foul, and Mike Krzyzewski immediately takes him out of the game so he can't get it on defense. Goaltending on the way down, they rule it. Here's a case where Gardner Jr. just tried to stay in front of Williams and not tried to guard him to stop the shot. Three seconds and a half, Gardner must take it. Got it off in time. And Duhan with the excellent D there to shut him off. So, the goal 10 call gives Duke the lead by two and a half. Arizona had a lead at one point of five. Duke's largest lead was four. Let's go over to Bonnie Bernstein. Johnny is slim lead, but Lauren Woods has been finding success with Batty Eye on him. How does that matchup go in the second half? Well, well, Lauren Woods has played a good first half. Uh, Shane didn't have any fouls going to the second half, so we can be a little more aggressive guarding him, and that's what we're looking forward to doing in the second half. At halftime, Duke 35, Arizona 33. Greg Clark and Bill. A survive and star. No one symbolizes senior more completely than Duke's player of the year, Shane Battier, an athletic and academic all-star who personifies balanced excellence. So acknowledge and appreciate Battier. He is special. And there are the other seniors down at the end of the bench, many of them walk-ons. Every team has them, like Arizona's John Ash. Took five shots all year, but the spirit and soul of what a team is all about. Or Duke's Ryan Caldbeck. 13 games this year, one point. His real contribution is practicing diligently every day without complaint in order to help the stars play better. Senior starters like Shane Battier have a basketball future. The bench seniors do not. This is their last serious team experience. Tonight is it. Tomorrow they begin the rest of their lives having learned valuable life lessons, reliability, unselfishness, preparation, empathy, teamwork, seniors that know their place and are proud of it. And look down at the end of the bench tonight, win or lose, that'll be the kids that feel it the most. An added thought, since there are fewer and fewer senior superstars who stick it out, hey, why not have an award that honors a graduating senior? He must earn his diploma, bring him back next year. Hi, Octane, let's go through your game analysis here. Well, three is the number, and although Duke is only four for 15, they have a 12-0 lead in the three departments, so a big advantage for them because in the case of Arizona, they haven't been able to do anything. Boozer's breakout, I think he's done a terrific job, particularly in the fact that you now have to consider him a starter. He's mine. This has been a zero factor, and the reason for that, Arizona playing an awful lot of matchup zone. That's something we may see more of here in the second half. And Woods' homecoming, it's been a great one. 13 points, four rebounds. Duke has had nobody that can match up with him. Let's go over to Armand. Thanks, Jim. And speaking to Coach Olsen, he's exactly what you said about Helter Skelter. He said we have to be a little more patient inside. We're getting the ball in there, but we're not being patient. On the other end, the players are talking about energy. They're saying, Lauren Woods, if we bust our butt, we're going to walk out of here with a ring. Jim? All right, Billy, again, this style of play, is this what you expected we would see here? Not at all. As a matter of fact, I thought it'd be much more up-tempo. They like to play that way. Arizona is 16-0 when the game is played at 80 points or more. They do not play that well when it's below that, so not a good sign for Arizona. Unless the tempo gets moving. 
Batty a baseline for hook two. He had only six in the first half. Boy, that was a great job by Batty a because Wright was over there to draw the charge. I don't know how he was able to we weasel his way through there. Gardner's got to get on track from the outside. Right over Batty at the other end. Little change in matchups here now. Michael Wright, eight points on the night. And let's see if we're going to see the defense. And it's still Woods on Battier. Boozer. Nice job. Uh, Boozer. Showing that touch on the inside. Didn't always have it. Sometimes would just go up just too, too strong. But, Jim, that's a great move by Duke. Go inside now with the pass. They don't have to do it just with dribble penetration. Gardner gives it up to Woods. Back out. Kick. Jefferson all set. And Battier brings it down. Much as we saw James miss a jumper before because he didn't make a clean catch. That happened to Jefferson as well. Williams, three. Boy, and Moose are doing the job. Now they've got a switch. Now Woods back on Battier, and I'm really surprised they don't keep the ball in Battier's hands. Push off. Right. With the forearm. Anytime you use that forearm to a man's back, you're going to get the cheap call. There's Wright moving those feet, getting position. Boy, he's so tough on handled in the low post. Williams turns right around, fires the three. Strong again. Boy, Jason taking the quick shots, isn't he? And Lute Olsen said he wanted his team to be a little bit more patient. Not there. There's a push from behind. Williams is made now one of eight from three and that's uh, almost approaching the numbers on Saturday for the game against Maryland. Well it has been interesting how he has been able to go ahead and shoot in such streaks. There's a cheap foul on Lauren Woods. His second Billy. And if I'm Duke University right now Battier from the outside making Woods guard him and try to have Battier dribble against him. Let's see if they're going to get him the ball. Dunleavy takes on the great defender. And Woods clears. When will Arizona hit a three tonight? Throw for nine. Driving, Gardner draws. One on Duke. I really thought that Duke wasted a very good possession that time down the floor. Dunleavy he took that shot too quickly, never gave Battier a chance. That's on Duhon. Thursday on CBS. Find out what more than 20 million viewers already know about every week. CSI, the hottest new show. Following Survivor. Thursday's on CBS. Duhon with his first. And Gardner to the line. Well, Jim, this may help Gardner right here. He hasn't hit anything from outside. Sometimes you go to the line, and it helps you get your rhythm on the shot, and when you see them go through that net, you start getting some confidence. So it's a real good thing to have a shooter get to the line when he's having a bad night. Sophomore from Indianapolis, where Arizona won its championship in 97. He didn't go to the Final Four in 97, but in 91, the other time, last time before that, that the event was held there. Duke won the championship, and he went to the free shoot around on Friday just to watch Duke practice. Traveling called against the Blue Devils. Jason Williams not getting anything going at his guard position. Mike Krzyzewski very concerned here, and it might be Jim, when you think about it, and he did drag the feet, good call by the officials. It may be the two cheap fouls he picked up, which threw him out of his rhythm early in this game. It hasn't it, been the same since. Turned it over three times in the game. Woods takes the three. Follow up, Arenas. Boy, he read that rebound just right, anticipated, couldn't finish it. Jefferson with the big hack oh, prevented the easy basket shows how strong and how quick he leaps great job by Boozer getting out on the break and nobody got back good job by Williams to see the open man and look at Jefferson explode to stop that dunk coach K shuttling the two centers in and out of the lineup of Boozer coming on big again here at the final four just as he did on Saturday Edgerson off the Arizona bench. Mike Krzyzewski going for his third title tonight. That would tie him with Bobby Knight, his college coach. He would only trail in all-time championships by a coach, John Wooden and Adolph Ruck. And a win tonight would put him in a real interesting category. Now moving on John Wooden, who's maybe too far out of reach for anybody to ever catch. Edgerson on a push. Yep. 
Double threes. You know, when you have, Jim, when you have a game like this where neither team is shooting well from the outside, it's very difficult to get a flow started. Just when you seem to get something going in the offense, you miss the outside shot. Neither team can get control. Second foul on Edgerson. There have been no substantial leads in this game. The biggest lead was at 11-6 Arizona. Duke now ahead by three. Dunleavy makes it six. Great penetration by Duhon. He saw the opening, took advantage. Then he knew he was going to be guarded. Terrific job to kick it out. Gardner. And there you go, Billy, right off the free throws, as you call it. He drained the two free throws, got his rhythm back, hit the shot. Happens often. Battier, ooh, he looked like he may have had a lane, but instead, Dunleavy with the double threes on the last two trips. He shot Jefferson by shooting before he went for the dribble. Gardner. Oh, Battier blocks it behind the back to Duhon. One of the all-time blocks right there. And Dunleavy for three in a row. Oh, Lord, that is some sequence for Duke University. Shane Battier with the play of the tournament so far. Unbelievable. And there's a proud papa. Look at this play. All oh, ball. And then he catches and dishes it back. The Maryland faithful who came here for Saturday's game are furious, Billy, and spillover, you say, from Saturday. Oh, I definitely think that's the case, and they are not at all rooting for their fellow ACC members. Now, there was there was terrific contact created there because the block was so strong that it knocked Gardner to the floor, but there wasn't the body contact for the foul. I thought a good no call by the official. A steal, and Williams spins on Edgerson. Edgerson with the reach in. Dunleavy, though, just had a, a stretch somewhat dwarfed by that incredible play by Battier that Dunleavy knocked down three threes in 46 seconds. Nine points in under a minute. There's his father. Right there. You know, interesting story. He was recruited. He played, obviously, at South Carolina, but was recruited to Duke by Hubie Brown. Ended up not going to Duke, went down and played for the legendary Frank McGuire at South Carolina, and now he's got a son at the school that he originally thought about going to. A little quicker tempo taking place right now, and if Jason Williams has had a problem this year, it's on that foul line. Edgerson out with three, so Michael Wright returns. His mother, Althea, a guidance counselor, Duke educating educators, family. Who picks up full court. Battier wanted to try to get the double team where he'd have a size advantage on Gardner. Wright got it on the blocks. His man fell down, but he backed out. Good stop by Arenas. Boy, Duke doing a lot of double teaming here. Jefferson three-pointer. They needed it. He hit the big three-pointer the other night to seal things up, really, in that Michigan State game. Duke spreading things out now. Nobody down in the low post. It's Dunleavy again. That was blocked. Jefferson going to make him put it on the floor. Jefferson's hiding out in the corner. Arenas takes it instead. Makes it home. Battier trying to draw charges. The officials are letting it go. So he's got to give up that little sequence that he normally has on a guy that drives to the basket. And now we're getting that pace we expected from the start that was absent in the first half. And a reach in. No. They're going to say that Williams kicked it. They're calling it all. Oh, an offensive foul. Wow. His third. What a moment that is. Five unanswered by Arizona. That's down to six. A little run for Arizona after Dunleavy put Duke up 11. But on Dunleavy's last three attempt, Shashevsky said, hey, he was fouled in the act. What we have right now here, the coaches are really working these officials, Jim. And they need to let the players get right back to just playing the game. And James, good break. On the hold. Really good break to the basket by Jefferson. 
Lauren Woods is doing a lot of things tonight that you normally don't see. Good hit to the inside. He's really done a pretty good job on Battier, even when Battier's on the outside. Second foul on James. Again, a good play by Woods. Woods back out to right. Inside power move and one. All that was set up by Lauren Woods. He had the guts to take the outside shot when he was wide open. Opened up things for right on the inside. The big fella's doing quite a job in this Arenas game. At the line with one shot. And right so powerful in that low post. Boozer secures it. Oh, oh Williams Jason Williams look wasn't corner. looking. And it's Gardner picking it up for Arizona. Williams had his back turn. Arenas Williams had the open three. Banks it up. Right tips it around. And it's Arizona ball. Jim, Jason Williams really out of sync in this basketball game, isn't he? Normally, he would be coming back to get the ball. Instead, he was running down court with his head turned. Big possession here for Arizona. Woods delivers. He is playing a terrific basketball game. Nine point run for the Cats. They've had big second half explosions throughout this tournament. Big ones against Butler. Big one against Michigan State Saturday, and they're having one now. And right on the back. Little touch fouls are being called in the low post, so it's a good time to get it down in there. There you see Jason Williams running up the floor. He's a guard who always should have his head turned back the other way, coming back to get the ball to relieve the passer. Third foul on right. Dunleavy returns. James out. That's the sixth team foul on Arizona. Duke in the first half was in a great situation in regard to fouls, Jim. They never did get themselves up to the bonus. Battier. Great fake. Oh, Jefferson soars for the rebound. Surprised Battier didn't take that all the way to the basket. He had Woods beat. Arenas wanting that lob that he got so well against Illinois, but maybe not physically able to do that tonight. They got a switch, and Dunleavy was fronting Woods. Going against Duke. It's a matchup that Duke cannot handle tonight in Woods. Thursday on Survivor, seven castaways left. Five episodes to go. Don't miss an all-new Survivor this Thursday on CBS. That one on Dunleavy, his second 15 foul on the Blue Devils. And Jefferson can tie it. Big miss on Whoa. the inside. Jefferson wide open. I think he was looking for a little body contact. Nothing there. Now it's Arenas on Jason Williams. Williams should have an advantage of quickness here. Williams off balance, three. Tipped around out to Duhon. Back inside, Dunleavy, and it's his half. Beautiful pass by Duhon to recognize the opening. 14 for Dunleavy, 11 of them after the intermission. Gardner. Just when Arizona seems to be able to get in a position to make the strike. Look at this one. Front of the rim, Woods was under it. Well, Mike Krzyzewski said in that Maryland game when his team was not playing good, play by your instinct. But I think a little more thought would be necessary in taking a shot like that with nobody under. Right, they dump it inside. Boozer was holding on to him. One of the things pretty obvious, Jim, is that all calls down and low are really being called on touch fouls. So both teams be wise to go inside. Both teams one foul away from the one and one. Luke Walton, Justin Wessel return for the Wildcats. Sanders and James on the floor for the Devils. Well, Lute Olsen's showing a lot of confidence in this bench right here with a tight ball game, putting those two starters down. And Casey Sanders in the right spot. It's done Levy again. Boy, his dad doesn't get to see him play very often, but he's making this one a very special night. He really is. Father. Little 1-4 set right now, and without Woods in the game, where do the points come from from this lineup? 
Battier on right. A lot of battling down low. Gardner over James. He still can't hit from the outside. Two ball. Ball got away from right on the rebound. Arizona only one of 14 from three. And that's been the difference to this point. Back with the singular sky camp in Minneapolis. National championship night here. Next year's final four, Atlanta, Georgia. Jim Ludolson comes right back with Lauren Woods, realizing he had a team on the floor that really didn't have the scoring power necessary to stay up with Duke. So good idea to try to go ahead and get Woods back in there. He's not in any foul trouble, at least not at this point. And he's been a real factor for his team tonight. Battier got it over right. And Jefferson. Nobody stopping Gardner. Jefferson sets it up, drills it. He really shoots that jumper well when he's moving into the basket. Cuts the lead in half. Good solid screen by Sanders trying to get a pick and roll going. Gets it. Sanders, no sir. He never realized that the one-man zone was standing behind him. Terrific block right here. No foul on it at all. Excellent timing. No chance for Sanders. Dunleavy gets another one. Continues to be the Duke offense of the second half. Who would have ever expected that that's where the points really come from? Jason Williams having an off night. Dunleavy stepping up. Everybody kind of falls asleep on the out-of-bounds situation. The young man sneaks right in here. It's been interesting to hear Krzyzewski talk about how he is growing into his body as a player. Started out as a 6'5 guard, now as a 6'9 guard. Jefferson weaves it. Thought about it, goes back out. Gardner, same thing. Who Williams could have been called for his fourth. Jefferson too strong. Another good solid rebound by Boozer going up strong with the two hands. You know, Jim, you, you look at Arizona and you say Gardner. Oh, nice feed. Boozer went wide open. Gardner's lack of hitting the outside shot has put so much pressure on the interior of Arizona's offense to do all the scoring. And what will they do here? I think it's going to be a chest up by Dunleavy. Good call. Jefferson beat him on the dribble. And that'll be a one and one. It's on Dunleavy indeed. His third. Williams goes right by. Good pull up in his part. Right Nobody had to come over. Right. Walton doesn't get back there in time. Just a good dish. So the one and one. Seven fouls on each side. Boozer with another big solid rebound. Duhon gets right past Jefferson. Dunleavy. Beautiful oh, fake. Man. Beautiful fake by Dunleavy. Froze the defense because they thought it was going to be rotated to Williams. Kept the ball himself. He has had some explosive games, Jim, but this is the best he's ever played in a situation like this. Lead is back to 10. Walton inside. And Battier with the board for Duke. Under 10 minutes to play, double-digit lead. Arizona has gotten away from getting the ball to Lauren Woods. It's something they need to do. And there's Duke again, taking a shot before anybody's under. Wright and Woods have got to touch the ball some. And there's a foul on the way up. So will that it's going to be, be on, on Williams. It it's is Williams. on Williams, his fourth with the 9.23 remaining. Mm. Jason Williams really not in sync at all in this basketball game, although he's made a couple of big plays. It's not the All-American first teamer we've seen. He tries to slap over the top. Not good defense. And that's where you pick up the fouls. So Gardner at the line. So 
said in the act of shooting. Tim, I talk about Dunleavy having some big games in the ACC championship final against North Carolina. He had 24 points, 13 rebounds. So he is the ca capable of having a huge game against this quality of opponent. Gardner again, just trying to get that stroke started. Dunleavy has 18 and a half. Arizona as a team, 19. And I'll go back to that 80 point figure. Arizona 16 and 0 when they get over 80. They are 11 and 7 when they don't. And you can see where this score is right now. Not the kind of flow they'd like. Hey, Dan, I know you've been traveling around, blazing trails in your job, but let me show you what I can do. Great shooting from the outside. Good follow throughs, staying right with the shot, bearing him. Sanders back in, Mike Krzyzewski feeling that he wants to give Boozer, who's done a fine job off the boards, not only a rest, but an opportunity to be able to come back strong down the wire. So the foul was on right, or the Woods, I should say, his third. But Renus wanted the lob on that play. Gardner couldn't get it to him. Walt gives it up right. Can't handle it inside. Ball squirts free. It's Walton. Back out to Arenas. Arenas. Tip right. And Battier secures it. They've missed a lot of inside but, shots. They had the one. Jim, you got to wonder why Arizona had such great opportunities to get the ball to Lauren Woods, and he hasn't even touched it in the last few or four minutes. Timeout called by Duke with a nine point lead. All right, Billy, your thoughts here at this point. 8.39 to go. Williams with four fouls. Duke with a nine-point lead. Well, you would say that that really favors Arizona with Williams on the bench with the game that he's been having. But I really think the key for Arizona here is go to the guy that's been most effective, which is Lauren Woods. And as I said, going out into that timeout, he really has not touched it very much here in the last few minutes. It's important they get him the ball. He's made things happen on a positive basis. Edgerson fouled him. And oh, he's going to the line. line. Terrific play by Shane Battier, as always, on top of his game mentally. He had Edgerson up in the air, and all he was trying to do is draw the foul here, but also then gets the nice roll. Edgerson picks up his four. Boy, oh, soft touch. This is the last time the number 31 will be worn at Duke. The name Battier on the back, it'll be. The rafters raised to the rafters. It has been already at Cameron. And he's not having a big scoring night. Made again, big plays. Push off James. Jim, a little uh, historic note. The first team ever to wear, you mentioned names on the back. The first team ever to wear uniforms with names on their back with Duke University. 1962 in a game against against you. Course. You were on the court. I never would have known. I've been I, waiting <laughs> to spring that one on you. Oh, you That's what I was trying to do at the other end. Oh, is that right? Okay. But I, you know, that's kind of amazing. And, and uh, yeah, obviously played in the game. But I, I guess they remember. figured they figured you needed to make sure you knew who knew you were who supposed to be defending. Yeah, that was probably Bones's idea. I said, Packer, you don't guard anybody anyway. <laughs> Tie up and the arrow. Arizona. Arizona Test your knowledge of tournament trivia. Participate in live polls through this interactive telecast available on Ultimate TV. A little bit of nervousness on the part of the Arizona bench right now. I saw two of the seniors, Wessel and Edgerson. Edgerson, the real and a lone active player from that championship team of 97. Wessel and Ash were players on the roster didn't play that final four and Jefferson stepping in there draws the action draws the foul good job by Richard doing the same thing on his end of the floor that Battier was able to do on the other he is so explosive so quick coming across there then he has ability to leap up against anybody as we saw in the first half and shoot over the top 10th team foul will be double bonus the rest of the way not with this lineup on the floor particularly with arenas not at 100 percent but without Williams on the court you might think about pressing Duke. But again, it's not a pressing team that Arizona has out there. Jefferson at the line has had such a big defensive run. Boozer back in for the Blue Devils, shutting down Frank Williams of Illinois in the regional final. Richardson of Michigan State Saturday. He was asked yesterday, the hardest player he's had to defend all year. He said, there's no question about that. 
Casey Jacobson, Stanford. By well, hard, you know, by far the hardest. You, you know why that is, too, Jim? When you're a defender and you play against a guy that moves without the ball and gets the screens that Jacobson get, who's also a great shooter, that is a difficult assignment. He's on Nate James in this instance. And Dunleavy was bumped, no foul, and turnover. With under eight minutes to play, it'll be Arizona ball when we come back. They must make up 11 on the Devils. Exclusive coverage of the NCAA Men's National Championship game is sponsored by Oldsmobile and by Microsoft. And Billy, you really look at the game summary to this point. The two threes by Arizona, both knocked down by Jefferson. But the starting backcourt just can't hit from the outside. Arenas and Gardner. Well, they really have not. Gardner has not had his and give uh, Arenas a little bit of benefit in the fact that he is not 100% healthy. But there is the introduction to Lauren Woods. We talked about names in the back of the uniform. I, I think that maybe what Lute Olson did was introduce his team back to number three because when he touches it, good things happen. And you feel that's been there all second half. It really has. has onto it. Good Steve. Jefferson almost came away with it. Battier on the blocks. And Foul on the way. Really tight calls down on the inside. You had Wright with his hands straight up in the air, but he didn't get the call. A win tonight by Mattier would tie him with Wayne Turner of Kentucky as the winningest basketball player ever in college. It would give him 132 career wins. Unbelievable, isn't it? Although you'd have to almost say that the winningest player ever would be Greg Kubek. <laughs> you know, he won four national championships. He won four. How do you come up with that one, Jim? Kubek? Yeah. Played in four. Played in played four. That's yeah. a big one for, but he played yeah. for him. That's a big part. Thank you. Good catch, partner. <laughs> They've only won two. 91 and 92 in their last right here on this floor. But that's that's pretty big winning right there. Absolutely. If you've got to talk about, you know, now that fellows play four years as opposed to three, back in the days with Kareem and, and Bill Walton and the likes, uh, the cream it probably has to be considered the greatest ever in this respect. He only got to play three years, and all he ever did is win three most valuable players in the in the final four and win three championships. You can't do any better than that. Walton coming back in. Luke Walton. And again, they go to Woods. Good things happen. Hoping for a father-son national championship combo, Billy. That's right. It's seldom seen. We've had three, or potentially three. We've got two. And there he is, Walton, with the rebound. Jefferson, huge shot. They got it. Jefferson's elevating. The legs are getting that shot up in the air. And he has been the answer from the outside when the guards from Arizona have really not been able to do anything in that area. Suddenly it's at six. Boy, good hustle by Gardner. Almost got the five count. James drives in. And the senior gets it to go. What a play, knowing that Jefferson, with his great leaping ability, was going to block that shot. James stayed in the air and used the left hand. This is a big, big play. And is Mike Krzyzewski getting points from the unknown tonight? Dunleavy and James coming up with huge baskets. And Boozer. All five years, he, in that 97-98 season, played in six games and five for a medical redshirt. That's why, as you noted earlier, part of five ACC title teams. But he said, Nate James, his whole career said, what do you want me to do, coach? I'll do it. Well, coming out of high school, he was primarily a scorer. Now he be, has become a defensive player and obviously showed once again that he still has the talent to put down two and gets the extra for the three. Ball into the arms of Walton, gives it up Arenas. Well, that's a good catch by Arenas. He could never have expected the ball was coming. Walton. What a nice. move. Comes right back. Both teams getting good help off that bench. Good seal. Boozer. Woods defending. It's Dunleavy coming out with it. No reset on the 35. And Mike Krzyzewski wisely takes a timeout, wow. realizing he's got 12 seconds, but his team probably was going to waste three getting the ball out to another pass. Walton with a crucial basket. Seven point, Duke Lee.
Back for the final 6-13 after the Duke timeout. Lou Dalton again, Billy, trying to become the oldest coach to win the championship. Hall of Fame nominee announced in the past week, as was Mike Krzyzewski. And going to receive the John Wooden Legend Award in a couple of weeks. Which has been won previously by Dean Smith and Mike Krzyzewski. Woods again with another great play defensively. Big stop for Arizona right there. And Williams is back on the floor for Duke with the four fouls. Oh, Woods, what a rebound by Woods. He snagged it. He had the full reach to get it. Boy, not only seven feet tall, but his extension on that went right over the top of the Duke players. Boy, Jason Williams dribbled that one off his chest. Yeah, almost palmed it. And that was touched by an Arizona player. Good I'm ball. not so sure about that one. Arena's not uh, arguing it. I'm not so sure that ball didn't eventually touch the Duke player. Lute Olsen doesn't think so, and he had a pretty good angle. Arena's so quick. We saw that in the Michigan State game, breaking out on those cross-court passes. Huge defensive stand right here. Oh. And one! With the huge defensive and play. The numbers. Well, to the trailer. Oh. Arenas. It's down to three. Here we go in Minneapolis. Lauren Woods has been the man of the hour here on both ends of the floor. Once his team got reintroduced, and that could have been a big play there. Trying to take Williams out of the game. Trying to draw the fifth. Duke a little shy to go down inside the boozer with Woods in there. Duhon will challenge him. And this time they count the basket and they have the foul here. I don't know who it's on and there's a lot of... Well, oh, they say Woods. This is the second time tonight that Duhon has been able to arch that ball high up over the, the hands of Lauren Woods. Remember in the first half, Jim, when he drove down there and just put the tremendous arch on this shot. Watch it. And Woods couldn't get to him, hit him with a little body after the shot. It's the fourth on Woods. One shot. Now you've got two key players down the stretch, one on each team, really critical for their clubs. But I'd have to say Woods is more critical for Arizona on both ends of the floor than is Jason Williams, who has not had the big night. Plenty of roll on that one. Now Lauren Woods has to be really careful if he goes down in the low post. Jefferson wants the jump shot. Gets yes, his sir. wish. He wanted that shot, you can tell it. The only man hitting from the outside tonight for Arizona. And what Gardner is doing is a smart thing. He's staying down low on Jason Williams, trying to stay in front of him to draw the charge. Loser tried to get it on him, and what a foul by Battier. Woods really has to be careful. You'd think Wright would come into the game now to give him a little bit more power on the inside. Luke Walton, can someone else hit a three? Duhon. Scramble, and it's Jefferson. A quick possession there for Duke with that five-point lead. It really is, with four minutes to go, five-point lead. I thought they'd have brought the ball back out. Another touch foul inside, this one on Battier. Here's the pass inside, the good seal for Boozer. Woods could have picked up his fifth one there, no call. Battier comes right back from the weak side and without right in the game, nobody there to block him out. That foul on Battier, his first double bonus, two shots for Woods. Here's the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. Three-point field goals, Arizona, thanks to Jefferson's hot shooting. Yeah, otherwise, it would be uh, atrocious. Lauren Woods continued to really shoot at a torrid pace from the foul line. This is the kind of game you were looking for for the first 35 minutes. Battier with the solid screen on the outside, and everything develops from there. A good seal by Boozer. Battier then breaks to the basket with no blockout by Jefferson, and he's going to be able to go ahead without the blockout and put it down. Chevy trucks Ivision all over the play. Duke ball, three point lead, 3.57 to go. You would call it 
Oh, a couple of breaks ago, a strange game. But now this is kind of the action you were expecting. Yeah, a free-flowing situation right now. I think the key is which guy fouls out first, Woods or, or uh, Williams. What a tackle! Oh. Was that Battier? It was indeed. Battier with two follow-up baskets here in the late going. Renus almost turned it over. Challenging National Defensive Player of the Year, Longhorn Boozer. Really good block out by Boozer. Lauren Woods cannot be aggressive when he goes after rebounds now with the four fouls on him. Lute Olsen doing a wise thing here, going to come back in with right. He needs some more power. Again, trying to get that fifth call against Williams. See what Gardner's doing. Gardner is staying right underneath Williams and trying to draw the charge. William not used to that. Timeout, Arizona. Jim, here you see defense created before you have defensive position. When that contact was made, that should have been on the defensive player. But what Gardner's trying to do is getting underneath Williams on the dribble. But if you're the defensive player, you've got to be in a defensive stance. And he's not. He's crowding underneath, trying to pick up that fifth foul, so you can't blame him. All-important arrow belongs to Duke. Two timeouts apiece, double bonus each side. Under three minutes to play. Jefferson rattles it home. Back down to three. Dunleavy cannot handle him in there. Jefferson just too strong, too athletic. Jefferson with 15 in the second half. Again, Gardner Williams. Moving those feet. Battier, right over right. Everybody fell asleep thinking Williams was going to try to penetrate to the inside. He really froze the defense. Berger. Jefferson again, not this time. And Duhon, the freshman, has it for the Blue Devils. Really good job by the guard. Instead of running away from the ball, he came back to the rebound. Jason Williams doing a smart thing now, trying to keep the ball away from Gardner so he doesn't pick up that foul, put the ball handling in Duhon, and doesn't leave his hands. Now, Lauren Woods has a tough job out here because he's against a pretty good ball handler. Using it all, 10 on the clock. Jason, three-pointer. Got it! Hasn't had it all night, but well, when they had to, Gardner, 145 to go, he nails it. You're right, Jim. Gardner tried to go behind because he didn't think Williams would take that shot. His first field goal of the second half. Arenas inside, off Duke. Wildcats ball. Boy, Arenas is really showing a lot of heart in this mm. game. He is not himself tonight physically. Went in there, what a competitor. Trying to get everything he's got. Timeout had to be used there by Gardner. Nobody break into the ball. Lute Olsen very disappointed. They have only one remaining. Arizona will be inbounding down eight with 92 seconds left for the national championship. The Olsen family. Good screening inside, trying to get something against the man-to-man. -man. Pretty good look. It's Battier underneath again. He has been crashing the boards in the last five minutes with follow-up dunks and rebounds. Good decision by Jason Williams. Without the four fouls, he'd have taken that one to the basket. Now Mike Krzyzewski trying to have the clock as the sixth man for Duke. Good move here, too, to make Lauren Woods be the guy to have to handle the ball. The ball handler. Harder almost had it. Six on the shot clock. Woods steps out. What a spin move. And Woods comes out with it and then loses it out of bounds. And it was a change of possession to a new 35. Terrific job by Lauren Woods to try to make that interception. But how about the move by Williams to somehow, on a reverse dribble, split the double team? And they had a Wildcat who had already broke to the other end. Now they're An trying to basket. double team the ball. Gardner will send Williams to the line for two. Vicky Krzyzewski, two of the daughters are here, Jamie and Lindy. Mike and Mickey became grandparents for the second time one week ago today. Their daughter Debbie with her second child named after her father, Michael Giovanni Savarino. So Krzyzewski, father of three, two of the daughters here tonight. 
Jim, he's going to a new plateau now. Mm -hmm. When you start talking about what Mike Krzyzewski has been able to accomplish as a coach, as a coach at a very young age. Three championships if he closes it out. Number of ninth, final, ninth final four. Ninth final four win, that ties Adolph Rupp. We're talking mm. about legendary status now. Not, not just, hey, this guy's an outstanding coach. In the history of the game, he's starting to approach only those that are Hall of Famers. And you still have to go back, though, to the way that Tom Butters did something that so few have ever done, the way he stayed with his man. He was the athletic director after Krzyzewski. Look at this rebound out to Battier. After some real trying times, Duke was 10 and 17 his second season, and they lost their last game in the ACC tournament but by 35. Then the next year, it got even worse. They were same kind of record, lost by 43 in their last Jim, game. Jim, let me point out something else, too. When Mike Krzyzewski went to Duke University, it was the same year that Jimmy Valvano went to NC State. So that as Mike program was going down, Tom Butters not only had the guts to stay with him because of what Dean Smith was always doing, but that third year, Jim Valvano won a national championship right down the road at NC State. What guts by an athletic director to stay with a young coach. To Han's mother, she had an anxious moment on Saturday here after that collision. It's to take him to the locker room for just a moment. Sadly, that's not the way it works anymore. No, it really isn't. And you know, the other thing he has in common along those lines, the last year Bob Knight coached at Army, he didn't have such good success either. So here we have two guys now with what looks like three national championships who came basically out of the same university coaching status. Gardner, three. It hasn't been there all night for Gardner. Boozer puts it in the hands of Duhan, and Duke is on its way to a championship. And during the period that Arizona fell behind, they lost sight of number three, Lauren Woods, the man that had gotten them there so far. Mike Dunleavy gave them an incredible stretch in this second half, showing off to his father in the stands. The biggest comeback in a Final Four game, back from 22 down to beat Maryland. And tonight, they knock out Arizona. That's it. Duke has the championship. And Coach K is the proud father of three in more ways than one. This is his toughest team. Maybe not the most talented, but the toughest. Jimmy, not the game we expected, the way it was played. But in any case, these are two really outstanding basketball teams that represented college basketball oh so well. I had talked to you last night about how you couldn't imagine one of those two teams walking off with all the will of Duke and Battier's season. How would he not win a championship in his last game? And then the extraordinary emotional circumstances around the Arizona team this year. How would they not win in this last game? But. Uh, well, we talked about Battier, too, on Saturday when we said almost complete. He had everything other than the national championship, and now that for a guy who's been one of the great winners of all time in college basketball has it behind his name as well. College basketball's renaissance man, Shane Battier, a religion major who took a freshman class on the New Testament, said it sparked something inside of me. He said, I have a manic desire to please everyone. And there's another senior not to be overlooked. Huge minutes tonight, Nate James. Battier, who struggled at times with just learning how to have fun with his life. And this season, he's set out to really just enjoy himself. Quinn Snyder, a former assistant, said the oddity about Shane is when he came to college, he was an adult. We had to teach him how to be a kid again. The Krzyzewski family celebrates. The Blue Devils are the national champions. They win a twin championship in the Twin Cities. Here we go. I'm... Um.
Welcome back to the Metrodome in Minneapolis. A superb national championship game has gone the way of the Blue Devils by 10. The final 82 to 72 over a fighting Wildcats team from the University of Arizona. I want to remind you coming up tonight on CBS, your late local news, followed by the late show with David Letterman, Dave's guests, Craig Kilborn, and the latest survivor castaway, Jerry, that's coming up tonight on CBS. We also have still to come your way, of course, our final tribute to the tournament, one shining moment. Right now, let's take you back down to the court, Jim Nance and Billy Packer. Jim. All right, thank you, Greg. And Coach K, my partner over there, said this is the toughest team he's ever seen at Duke. How would you rank that? I, I think we're as tough as any, and uh, being so young uh, to show that toughness, Duhan, Jason, after he made a bad play, comes and hits the three. Mike Dunleavy uh, hits those three threes in a row. Uh, and then Shane wasn't hitting his jump shot, but he comes up with two amazing offensive rebounds. Uh, we just did tough things, and uh, I think we're deserving of this. Jason, uh, yeah, terrific job tonight. I want to say on Saturday, I said his career is almost complete. Now, Shane, is it? It's complete. Uh, now, all that's left for me is to uh, ride off in the sunset in a white horse. But uh, I love my guys. We fought. We fought. It's a great year. This is the, the perfect way to, uh, to end it. Well, you have been a tremendous example of college basketball. How about this guy over here? Where did he come from tonight? Great job. Yeah. Man. It's about time. Um, finally, you know, made my shots in the second half and, uh, you know, was able to give us a little bit of a boost. But, um, you know, it just feels great to be a national champ. I would think that knowing all of what Arizona was going through this season made it even that much more difficult for your team to get prepared tonight, huh? Well, when you talk about toughness, come on. You know, Arizona is so tough and uh, what they've gone through and then the caliber play that they had. When we started, I didn't realize how good they were until we started playing the game. And I looked at Johnny Dawkins and I said, I knew they were good, they're better. And so winning against them makes it makes it a, even a better national championship. And you know, I've got to point out this guy right here, another senior, Nate James, closing it out with a championship tonight, Nate. What's your thought? I'm speechless. <laughs> now, all year long, we've been, we've been playing as a fist. Yeah. Through adversity, through, through whatever, we stuck together. And we, this is a total team. Today, this is a great day. And I'm glad to bring it back to Durham. National championships. National great championships. Going, We're celebrating Thank the Cameron you. right now. Tremendous will. The Blue Devils have won the national championship. We'll continue from Minneapolis in just a moment. Welcome you back to the Metrodome in Minneapolis where Duke has beaten Arizona 82-72 for the national championship. Our Chevy MVPs of the game for Arizona, Richard Jefferson. Jefferson with 19 points and 8 rebounds. Mike Dunleavy for the Duke Blue Devils, 21 points, 18 of them in the second half. He shot 5 of 9 from behind the three-point line. It is now time for the presentation of the NCAA championship trophy. Here's public address announcer Jackie Bowe. Your attention, please. To present the championship awards tonight, here is the chairman of the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Committee, Mr. Michael Tranghese. Good evening. On behalf of the NCAA Men's Basketball Committee, we first would like to acknowledge great performance by Coach Ludosen and the University of Arizona Wildcats. And now it is my privilege and honor to present the men's championship trophy to Coach Mike Krzyzewski and the Duke Blue Devils.
Mike Krzyzewski, one of his assistants, Johnny Dawkins, and a happy group of Duke Blue Devils national champions, 82-72 over Arizona tonight. We'll be back to the Metrodome with more in just a moment. These are courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Goodyear providing aerial coverage of the world sporting events for nearly 40 years. We here at CBS Sports would like to pass along our congratulations to CBS Sports Vice President of Communications, Leslie Ann Wade and Kevin McGinn, and their new addition to their family, Maggie. Congratulations, folks. Just a short while ago, our Armitean caught up with Lou Olson, the head coach of the Arizona Wildcats. Coach, perhaps the most maddening thing of the tournament is a night like this and a game like this, someone has to come up on the short end of the score. What made the difference in your mind? Well, I thought down the stretch, uh, Duke was, was tougher than what we were when, uh, when they really needed to be. It seemed like we had all kinds of balls in and out of our hands off the boards, and they, and they uh, were able to knock them loose. Um, we were hurting, obviously, physically with, uh, uh, with Gilbert's situation, and and uh, our guards did not shoot the ball well. But when you're not shooting the ball well, you need to do a better job of getting it to the, the inside people because uh, we were able to hurt them in there. We just didn't do, did a great job defensively of making it tough for us to get the ball inside. Coach, your thoughts on the officiating, which at times certainly seemed to infuriate you, your coaching staff, and large sections of this crowd? Well, you know, I mean, there are going to be calls that uh, are going to be going to be made. I, I frankly thought that uh, uh, Jason Williams was fouled out twice with push-offs, uh, but, um, but it didn't happen. So, you know, officiating wasn't what, uh, what got us. It was, it was Duke's play that got us. Is it possible at a time like this to piece together your personal emotions, what a championship would have meant for you and Bobby? Well, the, uh, you know, I think the main thing with, with our guys, I think they played hard under difficult circumstances. and. And uh, the, the effort has been there, the togetherness has been there, everything that they could do, I think, has been, uh, has been done. I told them uh, in the locker room, uh, I don't want to see anybody coming out of that locker room with their head hanging because certainly um, all the emotions that they've had to go through this year, uh, they've withstood that very well, and I, I think uh, they've done a, done a great job. I mean, you get, you get to the final game, and it's always... Uh, it's always tough. Somebody's somebody's got to got to lose it. But certainly uh, Duke was was deserving of, of winning the ball game. Uh, we gave him gave him a good run, but uh, in the end we couldn't get it done. Coach, uh, congratulations on a season triumphant far beyond the basketball court. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Armin, the epitome of class in the world of college basketball, Arizona coach Lute Olson. Still to come, we have the comments of Mr. Kellogg and Mr. Walton, as well as one shining moment when we come back to Minneapolis right after this. Back inside the Metronome, where Duke has beaten Arizona for the national championship by a score of 82 to 72. Greg Gumbel, along with Clark Kellogg and Bill Walton, will take a look at the highlights, and we'll pick it up in the second half, uh, where Duke really began to assert itself. Mike Dunleavy with his first second half three-pointer, and then Dunleavy from long range again. Defense by Battier is going to lead to a third consecutive three by Dunleavy. Duke up by ten, but. Arizona mounts a rally. Lauren Woods, two of his game high 22. It's a two-point game, but Dunleavy again pushes the lead to double digits with another three. Now, Richard Jefferson began to catch fire. He had 19 points. He hits another one here, four out of eight from behind the three. But Shane Battier with the dunk helped secure it. It was a five-point lead. Duke won it by 10. Coach Mike Krzyzewski gets a hug from Shane Battier, and why not? This is championship number three for Mike Krzyzewski, and all on the list of most national titles, he ranks tied for number three. Let's get some thoughts on this game, and I'll begin with you, Bill, and I'm wondering if you can separate yourself from the emotion that you must feel being the father of one of the young men on the losing side of the ball. But isn't that where life's greatest lessons are learned? What we saw from the Duke Blue Devils today was a beautiful display of championship-level basketball, the style, the competitive greatness. Everybody talks about Duke's offense and the threes, but what about their defense? What about their rebounding, the discipline that they showed them? On the offensive end, Duke's guard penetration. Arizona was unable to stop that. Then the kick out, feeding Dunleavy time and time again. When they got the ball in the post, they would look and they would dish. The guys cutting from the weak side, absolutely beautiful here. The balanced attack, 
everybody for Duke absolutely competing beautifully. And then the solid defensive rebounding was all right there. This was about the team game for Duke. This was about the exquisite skill and the unparalleled physical conditioning a most deserving champion at yeah. Duke University. Clark, I thought that Duke was a model of consistency from start to finish tonight. You know, I really thought the difference was obviously the Dunleavy three-point barrage, but more importantly, it seemed to me, Greg, that Duke came up with every big play, every loose ball they needed in the second half, every nice opportunity to score against Arizona's defense, which was overreacting. They played extremely well, especially when they needed to get it done with the tough hustle plays. I just think Duke made more of those, and that's why they're the deserving champs. All right, you guys were superb as always. We'll take one final time out here, and then when we come back to the Metrodome, one shining moment to top off this national championship. Back at the Metrodome, Duke. 82, Arizona 72. Coming up tonight on CBS, your late local news, followed by a late show with David Letterman. CBS Sports coverage of the Masters begins with late night highlights this Thursday and Friday at 11.35 Eastern Time. Live third round coverage gets underway on Saturday at 3.30 Eastern. Sunday's final round coverage comes your way at 4 Eastern Time. And we add our congratulations to the Blue Devils. Tonight's national championship victory, Duke's third NCAA title, is further testimony to the class and quality of their basketball program and in particular to the coaching skills of one Mike Krzyzewski. We also tip our hats to Lute Olson and his Wildcats. Their season-long tribute to the coach's late wife, Bobby, kept the team together to the last. Now it's time to lower the curtain on CBS Sports' 20th year of tournament coverage and to thank the men and women who made it possible for us to bring you the many shining moments of this year's NCAA tournament. For Clark yeah. Kellogg, Bill Walton, and for all of us here at CBS Sports, I'm Greg Gumbel. And so long from Minneapolis. Ball is tipped. There you are. You're running for your life. You're a shooting star. All the years, no one knows just how hard you worked. But now it's yours. In one shining moment, it's all on the line. One shining moment, they're through.
time is short and the road is long in the picking of an eye all oh, that moment's gone and when it's done win or lose you always did your best cause inside Feel the beat of your heart Feel the wind in your face It's more than a contest It's more than a your best cause inside you knew that one shining moment you reach for the sky one shining moment you knew one shining moment you were willing to try one shining 